This video is brought to you by my new book, Cryptid and Other Stories of the Bizarre and Terrifying. If you're looking for something to give you some nightmares before bed, then feel free to check out the links in the description. Shrouded Insanity. This is a side-scrolling hack and slasher from indie developer Steve Gale and put out by Pugware. I was drawn to this game at a first glance thanks to its presentation, which made me think 2D Bloodborne. What I actually got once I played it was more in the spirit of Golden Axe with some Dark Souls DNA mixed in rather than anything purely Soulsborne. I also found it to be something where for everything this game does right, there's something else that it does that it either fumbles or just handles clumsily. What are those things? Well, I'll tell ya. One thing I have to make clear is that this is actually the first chapter in a five-game series called the Skult Fault series. I was unaware of this when I grabbed Shrouded Insanity, so I don't know how it leads into the wider narrative of the series. However, the story here is a rather simple affair. You are a man resurrected by a mysterious benefactor and given a job to do. Kill four knights, they've taken over the mansion, and you're free to go and live your new life. A nice simple affair, and Steve Gale actually did a good job of imitating Dark Souls' use of environmental storytelling. The different rooms, grounds, and floors of the mansion do feel distinct from one another, with design that points to some grim goings-on in the lead-up to it being enveloped by a strange fog trapping the residents and making them go insane. There's a dead alien creature pinned to the floor of an observatory, unrecognizable geometry turning certain rooms into paradoxes, maids impaled on trees in the garden, and in one room, signs of things escaping from spaces that had no business holding something. It all comes together to give the setting plenty of character while making the player wonder what really went down here. Now if the game had a map system, that'd be great. It's not hard to work out where you are in the mansion. As you explore, it does click together, but it can be easy to forget where you are exactly in relation to the other parts of the mansion, since a lot of the hallways and rooms do reuse the same art direction. So it does come as a head-scratching surprise when you went one way through the mansion, only to end up looping back to the central area from the opposite side. A map system would have been a great way to help the player keep track of where they are exactly, as well as where the boss fights against the knights are located so the player can avoid them until they're actually ready to fight them. Speaking of the knights, they're actually a real highlight of the game. Each knight is a unique challenge to face off against. One focuses on speed and dodging the player while taking advantage of high-powered guns, while another tries mobbing the player and overwhelming them with illusions in melee. They're a lot of fun to fight, and as an added bonus, when you do finish the game, you're given a neat New Game Plus feature, where you get to play the game as one of them. At the time of writing, I had managed to beat one, and it was a good challenge. One anyone could overcome in the traditional method of patience, practice, and memorizing the enemy patterns. So suffice to say, they're not cheap. But with that being said, the combat overall does feel clumsy. As I said before, it's a hack and slash affair that feels like it was taken out of Golden Axe, but with elements of Dark Souls and Bloodborne thrown in. There's stamina management, gunshot stunning, blocking, parrying, and dodging, and it all does work, just not cohesively. For one, it's easy to gauge the distance of both your and your enemy's attacks. So after a few encounters, you know how far away you need to be for an attack to hit or miss. So in a lot of instances, you really don't need to use the dodge. Instead, you can just learn to know when to walk or run away. What's more is the game is best played with a gamepad and its control scheme is almost one-to-one -one with Dark Souls. It's the small differences though that hurt it, like how sprinting and dodging are done with different buttons or how you block with the left trigger and use your gun with the left bumper. So thanks to the close similarity, it's easy to fall into Dark Souls instinct and run when you're meant to dodge or shoot your gun when you're meant to block or parry. This does get annoying, but it is something the player can overcome, but it does make me wish the game had an option for control scheme customers. 
Overall though, I had fun with Shrouded Insanity. It's a good hack and slasher with some nice atmospheric environments that drive home its horror elements. I can see myself playing more of it in the future and even checking out the other four games in the Skull Fault series. So if you're looking for a nice retro hack and slasher or action horror title, then yeah, it's worth taking a look. Hey, thanks for checking out this video, I really do appreciate it, and if you really liked it, then please hit the like and subscribe buttons, that would really help me out. Now for the next game review, I haven't really chosen anything, I'm playing Elden Ring right now and I'm loving it, but I'm not sure if I'll review it or not. I bought a bunch of stuff off of GOG for my birthday, so I might review something from there, like Martha is Dead. For now, it's a bit of a coin toss. As for movie reviews, I've actually got some stuff that's partway done, I just need to sit down and get them finished and they'll be done and dusted, including a review of Prisoners of the Ghost Land. So I got all that more coming up, so please stick around.